Hello everyone, this is Counter Yolo, bringing you another video talking about Star Trek Online. And today, I'm going to be doing a Star Trek Comparisons video for the Vulcan Tapau scout ship. Wow, there is, there's a lot of stuff with this ship that is extremely good for both science captains as well as tank captains. So, I will still be going through all that in this video. Because this happens to be a leveling starship as well, yeah, there's a lot of stuff we have to talk about with this ship. So, of all the Starship comparisons videos that I've done so far, this one is definitely going to be the longest. So, see the timelines in the description in case there's stuff that you want to skip over, because there's a lot of stuff in this video. So, let's go ahead and get started. Um, to start off with, um, we have to compare the scout ship class to Raiders, because that's what the scout ship class is really based off of. Um, so for those of you that didn't watch the other videos, Raiders are basically just escorts that have lower hull and shields, have one less weapon, um, but they get a lot of extra um, inertia and impulse speed, as well as it says they get a bonus called Raider Flanking, which, is, which gives them an additional um, damage boost whenever they're hitting um, an enemy's rear arc. It's only, only like 8% in PvP and 25% in PvE, or if you have um, like the improved or advanced Raider Flanking, I mean, it, it, it's 11% in PvP and 33% in PvE. Also, additionally, um, most raiders have a commander tactical bridge officer seat, and then universal bridge officer seats for the rest of those. Um, there are some on the exchange that it's all universal seats here, um, so you can actually do basically any like bridge officer that you really want. The point of raiders is that they have insane bridge officer flexibility. It also means that you don't actually need as many raiders inside the game to have the flexibility of what, of what other, other ships really want inside the game. Now, when it comes to scout ships, um, they they are a science vessel with, with that raider bonus. So they're still kind of a science ship, so it's going to be a 3-3 three, three weapon layout typically for them. So it's, it's only six total weapons, which is normal for science vessels. Yes, there are science dreadnoughts that have seven. They are... Those are the exception. This is like a normal scout ship that has lower shield ratios, uh, but still has secondary reflector and sensor analysis with the Raider flanking bonus on it as well. Uh, the consoles that, that have been released previously for the scout ships, we've only had two thus far, is that there's typically five science with four tactical and two engineering. The one for the, the anniversary is actually three tactical, three engineering. I'll get into why that's the case later on in the video. Yeah, for this one, it's a commander science bridge officer seat with a universal bridge officer seat for all the rest of them. So, okay, so let's go ahead and get started now with the leveling starships. Um, for the for these these comparisons here, I, I decided to not use the regular um, starter ship. I decided to use the sea store um, science vessel just because I felt that was a little bit fair, kind of. Even though I'm not using the sea store stuff for the rest of the tier stuff, I thought that that was the best comparison here. Um... Just so the like like the the sea store science ship here is actually starts at one point two shield ratio, so it's actually pretty good. Um, of course, here is ours. Um, starts at nine k, one point three shields. Um, so it actually is, is decent there. A turn and impulse rating is also really really high because this is a basically a, it, it's like it's a science scout ship, so a science raider kind of. Um, five bridge after seats that are all ensign. Um, the reason why I'm using the mirror angle as the other one is just because it's the closest other level of shit that we have in, in the game right now to a science vessel that levels inside the game. I know a lot of you disagree with that. Um, however, if, if you talk to, to a few people in the, in the game that really like radiation boats um, inside the game, they actually really, really like the uh, bridge officer layout and console layout for the mirror ang angle carrier. So I felt that it was still appropriate to put it here. So that's just the way it is so here's the stats for these now as we go to, to tier two to tier four i'm using the regular science vessels um, that are available from the federation this is a cross faction ship so klingon captains can also use, use use this as as well as you can see here for the for the stats they're really really close 3.5k 1.3 shields just this one has a higher turn and impulse rate and, and, and inertia Better bridge off sheets because you've got a bunch of lieutenants here versus a lot of ensigns with one lieutenant, but pretty relatively even considering a, a lot of the stuff regardless. 
as we go over the tier three, um, it starts to edge out Eve even more. Base stats exact same as to our regular science vessels here. If you haven't caught the pattern yet, basically, if um, you're thinking about kind of leveling a science ship inside the game, the Vulcan to POW is going to be a stronger version of that for you. Gives you a lot more bridge after flexibility. Doesn't force you into a lot of certain things, which can be nice. The blog, for some reason, has that the uh, for the tier three, it's two weapons at the front, three in the back. That seems really weird to me, but that's what the blog says currently. So that's what I'm going with here. Even though the Olympic one is three two, I can't really explain that to you. And finally, when we get to tier four, where basically the only stuff that changes is that you get an extra console later and um, stats get much better. Um, the stats still right beginning of tier four is still the same as well. Um, the bridge after seating, as I said, um, commander science with the rest of them as um, universals, two lieutenant universals, one of them is intel. So you could do override system system safeties three with this ship, which is interesting for science vessels, but we'll get to that later. Um, so yeah, um, it, 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 it is a really in, in interesting vessel for leveling. Definitely um, this, this, the science vessel to go for now. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into our science vessel comparisons now and start seeing some of the, some of the weird stats that starts showing up. Let's start off with, I'm obviously going to be comparing this to our other scout ships that exist inside the game. These are the, these are the only two ones that exist. This one is, is from, a, from the Tier 5 um, colony. This one is off of the exchange from a lockbox. As you can see, the difference between these two is that it loses a lieutenant commander, um, a bridge officer ability. Um, it's it's got one less console, got one less console, sorry, um, and it's just its shield and hull ratios are ten percent lower. Other than that, it's basically the same ship, except that this one looks looks, looks like a UFO. This one looks like a crescent moon. Um, I can't confirm that um, the ex the other Lucari um, looks can be put onto the Lucari Draenor scout ship. I, I I know that the Nakam scout ship look can be put on the other Lu Lu Lucari ship, um, the Lucari Hokun science vessel, and, and vice versa. This one, this look can be put onto the the UFO. I've never bothered to get the Draenor scout ship because the stats didn't really int interest me personally. It, it's it, it, it's a lot of fleet, fleet modules for a ship that isn't necessarily going to be the greatest for science tanking. So it just did not in, in, in interest me personally at all. But as but as, as you can see here, one of the things I think is interesting is that of, of these three ships, our, our our new ship has has the highest shield ratio, tied tied for lowest hull. It's uh, it's basically ten percent lower hull for like eight percent higher shields. Um, it, and it does have a higher turn rate with it with the same impulse and inertia. Um, big difference here is that it, it's a Lieutenant Commander Intel versus a Temporal Operative. And it, it's, it's got one less tactical console than the, the Colony Scout ship. So if you're going for maximum DPS, I would imagine... I, I'm not a DPS captain, but I, I would imagine that the, the Colony Drinner should be better because it has an extra tactical console. However, you do get Override System Safety 3 with those Lieutenant Commander Intel versus the Temporal Operative. It is possible with, you know, cannons and science, this one might actually be able to out-damage this one. I can't confirm that. I'm not a DPS captain. I'm, I'm just theorizing right off the top of my head. There, there could be a case for this one actually being better than the colony ship now. But but they're, they're definitely comparable, is, is, is what I'm saying. So if, 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 if you want a tier 6 scout ship, this is much, much easier for those of you that have a, have a really small fleet to obtain than this one. Obviously, here's the stats for the, the, the other Lulukari ship um, versus other, other ships that will be showing off in this video. The only saving grace for this ship right now is the is is the Protomatter console. It's the best healing console in the game really right now, especially to heal other ships. Um, the stats on this is not really great otherwise. Just gonna throw that out there. 
does have 3 technical power Intel, but it's got only two title consoles. So, uh, all right. So for other science vessels, um, when I initially looked trying to look at the speedy ones in the game, these were the two that came to mind as ones that were fast and strong. The fleet Nautilus is, is is an earnable one. Um, it has fast impulse, but it's lower on inertia, inertia and turn rates, so it's still going to have the, those problems of trying to go really, really fast and turning. Um, but bridge Arbacene is still okay, to be honest. Um, and because it's got a, a commander temper optive, it has molecular reconstruction. The Sona Command Science Vessel, especially if you, if, if you don't care about dual heavy cannons and radar flanking, in my opinion, the Sona Command Science Vessel gives you most of what you want in this ship, but you get a much higher hull ratio for slightly lower shields. Just slightly lower shields. Um, it, it's also the only science vessel with with the with a, a commander command, which means it's the only science vessel that has the inspiration mechanics, which, by the way, as an experience as a tank captain, in my opinion, this is the strongest um, special thing to have for a ship inside the game for tanking. So it has a long boost of going for that too. This is only a, an exchange starship. They, they they do go pretty pricey on the exchange. So this it is something to think about. There are, are other science ships that can perform a little bit close to this um, for its whole ratio. So just something to think about as well. Now, as for tier five starships, um, these, um, at least on the forums recently, these these are the two side ships that have been in most demand. I think the reason why we're getting a tier six Vulcan ship is because people for a while have been asking for it for a tier six Dikir, and um, and I can't blame them. I mean, it's in my opinion, it's it, it's one of the coolest ships um, aesthetically for its for both uniqueness and actually look looking cool inside the game. And also be before tier six stuff from what i've been told this this was one of the more competitive um tier five ships inside the game too um it, it it's got it, it's support craft which is really cool um it's got it's got cool animations with all that hopefully in the, the near future they they release a tier six um Dekir, um in the sea store and once they do then i will buy it and i'll see if i, if I can use it as a science tank because i really really want want to use use this ship um, the other one is the is is the tier five fleet Nova. Um, this is here because I mean we have Captain Kim, you know from Star Trek Voyager and the Delta Rising expansion. This is also a really really fast ship, impulse speed of, of 0.2, just like the Scout ships. Low return rating though, but still a pretty high inertia rating considering it's a science vessel. Plus its stats are comparable to what a normal um, science ship is kind of going to be in the ballpark four. So the downside is obviously since it's not tier six, it doesn't have the specialist seating on it. So you're going to have that going against you. In my opinion, though, as, as for science tanking, the best two ships in the game for tier five um, is the Dyson Reconnaissance Science Destroyer and the Voth Palisite Science Vessel. Um, they're both good in their own ways. This one has dual heavy uh, cannons plus a tactical mode, which changes the commander science to a lieutenant commander science and the lieutenant commander tactical to a commander tactical. So even though you technically have a, a one bridge officer seat less on this, this tier five U, you can situationally use another bridge officer uh, bridge officer seat um, it, whenever you activate tactical mode. You do you do lose your sensor analysis and secondary deflector whenever you activate tactical mode, so that is the downside to it. Um, but if you invest in the, in the tier five U upgrade to get the fifth science console, the whole ratio and ratio is actually really really good. Um, also at the same time, if you want just a standard science vessel, the Voth Palisade is really really good. Um, if you actually look on the exchange. Typically on at least at least on PC, this is the most expensive tier five um, science vessel in in the game, by far the most expensive, and it's actually from the low buy store. Funny enough, so if you're actually wanting low buy for your buck, getting a Voth Palisade and selling it on the exchange will get you a lot of energy credits actually, 
It doesn't sell quickly though because not a lot of people realize of how strong this thing is. You do have low turning and inertia and impulse to kind of counteract that, but it, it's a really strong ship. Alongside that, if you get the other two Voth ships and equip all those consoles on this ship, you can have, you can have a cloak or, or Voth battle cloak with this ship. Voth battle cloak gives you a lot of resistance whenever you're going in and out of, 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 of your cloaks, so you can basically cloak without worrying about your ship dying, which is really interesting. It's also got one hangar base, so for those of you that really like hangar base. Now for the other two ships that I thought was really, really good for for kind of like their uniqueness inside the game, I thought of, of, of the Herc multi-mission science vessel and the, the sphere, build, sphere Builder science vessel. Great, great um, ratios for them both. Um, the science vessel has a really, really low turn rate, so you're going to have to work work around that a little bit. It does have molecular reconstruction with temper operative and Intel seats here. This guy hangar bay. It's it's like assuming that you have like say competitive engines to get around the turn rate issue, it's actually a decent PVE ship. The Herc ship here is here actually because it's decent ratios. Same kind of weapon layout as, as this this one. It's it's a 4-2 instead of like, like a 4-3, so it's it's still a regular science vessel. Do heavy cannons as well. And this ship um, has it has one of the strongest hangar traits inside the game. Um, it, I think I believe it's called Hive Bearer. Um, basically, if if you want to do a lot of damage through your hang, hangar pets. This is probably one of the best ships to get in order to get that trait. Whether you want to use this ship or not afterwards is really up to you, but it has has a really, really strong trait. In fact, because of how strong the trait was, they had to nerf that substantially so that hangar pets weren't the best way to do, do damage inside the game because it just about was at, at one point after the release of, of this ship. It's got a Lieutenant Commander Command. Which is really good for, for torpedoes and such too. It's got a lot of good defensive options too. So decent ships all around too. Obviously, much much slower and higher ratios than what you're, you're going to get on the Tapau. But still interesting science vessels as well. Now, for for ones that are a lot closer to the Tapau, um, especially ones that are cloaking, here's here's my two options here. Or for ones that I thought were pretty good. This, this one's an earnable fleet one with, with, with a built-in cloak with Commander Intel and Lieutenant Tactical Intel. Um, still a little bit slower than, than the, the, the POW, but it's still it's still a little bit closer than what most of the other science ships are inside the game. Then a cool Dimash science vessel, though, is actually a decent one for science tanking as well because it has a built-in battle cloak, but it still has your regular science stuff as well with it. And it's got better shield ratio than this ship. Still same hull. Um, a little bit lower turning, but it's still the same impulse. So, assuming you have competitive engines, this thing can, can probably keep up with a Tapau. But um, it doesn't have other special stuff with it. just to make better intel and, and lieutenant pilot. So, more things to think about for you all. Um, when it comes to Sea Store, obviously these are the two that I really, really like. The, the multi-mission um, size vessels are really, really nice. Um, really because these ships get auxiliary dual have, have, have heavy cannons, which is a really in interesting concept. I wish you could, you could get these cannons and put them on any science vessel because that would be super fun, and especially if you could have auxiliary turrets as well. Because um, if you did that, then you, would, you wouldn't actually even need to put power in, into your weapons because it will be relying fully on your auxiliary power. But basically what this also can mean is that if you have three auxiliary two cannons and three um, turrets, you basically don't have to worry about power cost reduction at all for your ship. Just have high power for both and you don't have to worry about it too much. Um, Bridge Officer seating is still okay. It's got Lieutenant Commander versus Temper Operative. Just like the regular um, Scout ships, the like the colony scout ship has the tank ready versus temper operative, so it's, it's comparable in that sense. But both of these ships are really slow versus a scout ship, so. Um, but but they have a but they have a hangar bay. 
and this one has molecular re reconstruction as well. As I've told you before, the um, the 31st century um, ships in the game are some of the strongest ones, raw, raw strongest ones inside the game from, from the sea store. And these stats should be able to show that pretty easily still too. It's got, it's got a really low inertia rating for a science vessel, so you're going you're gonna to need to need to work around that. From the exchange, obviously I have, I have to put in the cross field. It's our other discovery science ship inside the game. And it's still really strong. Um, it's got a much lower turn rate versus the, the reverse of the scout ship here. Um, it also has a Lieutenant Commander Universal Intel, but it also has a Lieutenant Universal Temporal Operative. So um, basically the cross field looks like the Tapau, but a little bit slower, a little bit lower turning, higher ratios, and um, some of the bridge effort seats is basically forced into a certain other class. This Lieutenant Universal is, actually, is, is a tactical, and this Ensign Universal is an engineering for this ship. As long as you're okay with that and a little bit lower turning, the crossfield is much, much better than the, the Tapau for PvE. PvP, definitely the Tapau is going to be better. Um, the other one good for PvE, in my opinion, inside the game right now, is the Paradox Temporal Dreadnought. I know that some of you like a certain other Dreadnought... The Krenum Dreadnought, its um, bridge offer seats for its specialist for its specialist seats is much lower than, than than this one, which is why I like this one a little bit more, personally. Also, this one's much cheaper on the exchange, and it has some aesthetics that really are a mirror the multi-mission vessel here, but it's, it's a little bit bit bigger. Um, four three ship as well, a little bit lower turn rate, but not as bad as the Krenum Temporal Dreadnought. And it's got one tackle seat less to kind of mirror this this guy here too. And it, but it, it does have, have a hangar base, so it does, does have that too. All right. Um, let's go ahead and get over to SS Scorps and Raiders. Um, because especially in PvP, you'll be finding, a, if, if you're going to use this science ship in PvP, you'll, you'll probably be finding a lot of these types of ships. Um, if, if you're really curious as to why I feel that escorts need to be compared to scout ships, um, see my video about like tactical versus engineering versus science um, as to why escorts typically beat science vessels and in why a scout ship basically evens the odds for uh, the tactical versus science um, problem in, in PvP. But here, but here's some pilot ships. Obviously, the pilot ships are supposed to be fast. They have pilot maneuvers, um, and the pilot escorts have a really, really high Im 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 impulse rating. Um, with, with the exception of the Rycine Corvettes, these pilot escorts are, are the fastest ships inside the game, um, as well as the other factions' versions of the pilot escort, pilot raptor, pilot warbird. Um, this is the closest one we have for a science kind of version to this. Uh, the better science pilot escort is the other packs, the Andorian versions for Federation. I can't remember what their other variants are for Klingon and Romulan off, off the top of my head, but um, this is the one you're um, especially you're going to want as science captain. It, this is the variant right here that has improved gravity well. Um, one, of, one of the best um, traits inside the game for science. Especially science captains that like to use gravity well. Um, but um, th this is a pretty good ship. It doesn't have the second sensor analysis secondary deflector, so it has that going against it. But other than that, it's still a really nice competitive ship. Um, when, when it comes to Raiders from the Sea Store, these are the other two that, that stuck out in my mind. Uh, we have the Temporal Raider, and we have the Geminar Vanguard Heavy Raider. Um, this one has molecular reconstruction and a battle cloak um, alongside its normal raider flanking and dual of the cannons. So it's a pretty nice well balanced ship with a very high turn rate and impulse and inertia. It does have really low hull and shields with that though. So you're going to have to really work, work around that. But it's still a nice ship regardless though. It's got temporal operative commander and, and lieutenant. So 
if, if you wanted to go science, like you, you can put a lot of science abilities on this thing and it can still do decent damage, but it's only three science consoles, so it's not going to be quite as good as what you could get otherwise. Jemar Vanguard is a little bit more survival oriented for um, a, a raider. Obviously, both these are both cross faction, five tactical, four science. Um, it still has respectable um, impulse. Slightly better turning than, than the Tapau, but still pretty high. And it's got a Lieutenant Gravity Versa Pilot to help with the fact that it doesn't have, you know, like pilot maneuvers or something like that. Uh, for ones from the Exchange, in my opinion, these are the ones that are the strongest from at least a stats perspective. Definitely, if there's consoles that I'm not fully re realizing they're super strong for certain Raiders, that should be really, really high, highly prized and such. That might put another ship above another. Maybe you should be replacing these with something else. But at least from the SAS perspective, these are the two that are really, really, really strong for, for Raiders. Um, Mirador and Theta class Heavy Raider has an, in, it has an interesting experimental weapon. Plus it has a pretty good impulse rating with its turning. Um, Commander Tactical Pilot, so it's got pilot maneuvers, and it also has improved Raider flanking, so it has that higher ratio for its, its a better percentage on Raider flanking, for, instead of like 8% or 25% for PvP and PvE respectively, improved gives you 11% and 33% additional um, Raider flanking bonus. Still though, Klingons obviously should have the best Raiders, and, and for the Klingon faction, what they call Raiders are typically birds of prey and the kelvin timeline version is is the best one of all those it's got built-in battle cloak it's got commander pilots so it's got pilot maneuvers it still has raider flanking with two heavy cans and such it was rating at 24 turn 22 initial rating of 80 so it's this is the um sea store version of a pilot escort that can that can still keep up with everyone else inside the game and also has a battle cloak so it's a really, really strong ship if you're into um, Raiders, honestly, and, and Birds of Prey and such. It's still really low versus, you know, the scout ship over here. But it's something that you definitely should keep your eye on. In PvE, it's definitely not going to be as strong, per se, because it's got really low ratios. Assuming that you can, you can work around that, it still can be a manageable ship in PvE. And lastly, I'm just listing two other escorts um, to think about because they have really high high um, imp, imp, impulse speeds. They're not necessarily the best per se, but they're ones that have been around for a while in, in, inside the game. Uh, the first one is a Geminar Strike Ship and a Geminar Recon Ship. They're both escorts that have reasonable hold and shield ratios with, with a really high turn rate and impulse speed. Um, they're 4, 3, plus 1, so they're not necessarily going to be like your record-breaking ships by any, any means for DPS. A lot of your PvP people still will use these ships, though, because of its console. Um, the Dominion Defense screen, combined with the two other Dominion set pieces for the Dominion set, makes the Dominion Defense screen really, really, really strong. Um, unfortunately, the Dominion Defense screen can only be used on, on Jemadar ships. I haven't been able to, to confirm. I haven't... I can't believe I haven't tested this ship, but I, I haven't been able to test to see if the Dominion Effect Defense screen can, can work on the Gemini Vanguard ships or not. Probably someone has, and they'll say it in the comments whether or not you actually can use the Dominion Defense screen on the Gemini Vanguard ships. If so, then those ships should actually be much higher in my other tier list, essentially, if you have this ship. Uh, the difference between the Strike ship and the Recon ship is that the Strike ship has the Lieutenant Tactical Intel and Lieutenant Universal Command. The Gemini Recon ship has Lieutenant Commander Tactical Pilot and Lieutenant Universal Intel. So, both of them have an Intel seat in general. It's just that one of them is Lieutenant Commander Tactical Intel, one's Lieutenant Intel, and then the other one has Pilot or, or Command. So, it is a decent ship. Um, and then that's why a lot of people really, really like this ship inside of PvP. Um... Another one that a lot of people seem to like in PvP is the Fleet Phantom Intel Escort. I don't feel it's quite as good, per se. Um, of course, that's my bias perspective as, as a tank captain. So, take that with, with a grain of salt, as, as you were. So, 
It's got a decent hole and shield ratio, still less than that than this guy. A lower turn rate. It's got it's got the it's got intelligence abilities, so that's nice because it has a commander in Intel seat. Um, bridge I've seen is not very flexible though, so you're kind of limited in terms of what you're able to do, but it still would do decent damage. It also has the cloak, so it does have that going for it for PvP, um, which is kind of rare for Federation ships. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for the regular 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 comparison stuff inside this video. Now for some of my biased opinion stuff inside the game. First off, why are we having a tier six scout ship right now? First off, it's it's it's, it's been a while since we've gotten an anniversary or a free earnable ship that that's a signed ship in the game. It's been a little while. Eleven starships is is the thing right now inside of Star Trek Online, which is why they made this ship into a level ship as well. Plus, scout ships are really rare inside the game. There's a tier 5 one off, off the exchange, which is really weak. And then the tier 6 version, you have to have a tier 5 colony plus 5 fleet modules to get it. And keep in mind, for fleet ships, whether from the, from a starbase or from the colony, you, you can't be invited to the starbase or the colony to access the other fleet starships. You actually have to be a member of that fleet to access their fleet ships. It's not like consoles, bridge officers, or weapons. From other fleets in which you can be invited into divided to another fleet's like map and access those things. For the your actual fleet ships themselves, you have to be a, a part of that fleet in order to access their fleet and access those fleet starships. Which means that scout ships are really rare inside the game right now for tier six. Um I mean true, like for a lot of your super competitive PvP people inside the game. Because they're, they're not, not, there's not a lot of them in the game. They have a lot of them are, are have made their own fleets and such, and so they and they have a lot of money, so they they've leveled up and gotten tier five colonies. So they so a lot of your PvP fleets in general have tier five colonies. So if you're really look, looking for a tier six scout ship, that's not this guy. You, you like that other one better? Just start asking around for a PvP PvP fleet that's dedicated to that. The private tier five, five colony or something close to it right now. Now, why is it a, a, as a pal? As you can see here, they need a science ship because we're in age of discovery, mirror of discovery, it needs to be a discovery error, error design. But they couldn't devalue the cross field, which means they probably couldn't have a regular science ship. So that's why they went with, you know, the um, science scout ship. Now, for my final thoughts in terms of this in general. The pros for this is that we have our first true leveling scout ship. It's not like the tangential one, like the mirror angle. We actually have, have a real science ship with sensor analysis and a secondary deflector. It's our t first tier six Vulcan starship. It can give you another another science admiralty card if 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 that's your thing inside the game. It's it's a tier six scout ship that's not from the colony, so that's super nice. Plus we plus we have a great PvP science vessel available to people inside the game. As for the trade and and the console. The trait gives you secondary shielding whenever you whenever face is depleted. And while that and while you have that secondary shielding up, your science and intel abilities give you additional hole and shield heals too. Um, we'll have to see the stats to see if secondary shielding is actually good or not. Typically, secondary shielding doesn't get the damage resistance rating of, of, of your shields applied to it. It's one of the unfortunate things with secondary shield for basically every other trait and console inside the game that gives you secondary shielding. However, the additional bonus that while you have that up, you your science and abilities will also heal your hull and shields is actually really, really good for science tanks. I'm not sure if it's going to replace anything that I have currently, but, you know, especially if, if you don't have, you know, like shield overload or turtle, um, this is actually a really, this is, I definitely see this as, as a very good replacement for one, one of those traits if you don't, if you don't have access to those inside the game. Now, as, as for the console, with this description, I see it as basically a feedback pulse that you can apply to one target that applies to all the damage coming from that target. They'll send it back to its to itself. This is a very, very depending upon how how long the, this console is activatable lasts, this this potential to be extremely strong for both adding additional survival to to, to a starship, or especially for um, especially for tanks inside the game, especially if 
they are not able to draw aggro for a little bit in terms of a really big burst from an ally, they they can use this console, apply it to that that really really powerful enemy ship, and for a few seconds, um, that ship is not going to be able to hurt their allies. It, they'll be hurting themselves instead. So um, especially if it, so if you're a science captain, if you're a science tank, regular tank, or you want to add additional survival to your ship, you really really should be um, willing to you know spend a little bit per day to do the omega e event to get this ship all this stuff looks really good um at least from you know bird's eye view perspective without seeing all the super nice stats of, of these ex extra traits and consoles only downside to this is that it's not a tier six to cure which is the coolest vulcan ship in the game um Scout ships are still going to be very limited to get after the anniversary event, so get it now while 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 it's easy. Um, and scout ships, by their nature, are not designed for the PVE demographic. They're going to have lower stats versus other norms for the first science inside of PVE, so um, it's still going to be struggling there in, in endgame. But for leveling, it's still a great ship, especially if, if you're wanting to learn science. It still has like the same stats as a regular science ship, a re regular science ship for leveling anyway. So it still has that going for you. So it's still going to be a, be a decent ship overall. Do not like just because you're a captain that doesn't play science typically. Like if you're one of those people, please consider getting this ship. It has great stuff overall for it. Do not discount that. But yeah, anyway, that's basically my comparison for this. It was pretty long, but there was a lot of points that I wanted to cover in, in this video. Hopefully, hopefully it was enjoyable to you. If you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. There's also some other Star Trek comparisons videos available on this channel for those of you that haven't explored the channel yet. Um, I also I also will be I also am working on some stuff right now dealing with the Star Trek Online lore. It's slowly coming along. I'm still at least two or three weeks away from being able to start showing those videos on, on the channel as well. But anyway, um, thank you all for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.